Will you please pray with me? Loving and gracious God, thank you for gathering us this day, this amazing day to celebrate the most powerful truth of our Christian faith. God, I ask that only your words be heard and your words be spoken. Amen. Well, today is an Easter celebration. And in every celebration, a few things are key. Decorations and atmosphere and conversation. And so today we're going to talk about those two things this morning. Now I want to talk about our decorations and atmosphere at Church of St. Andrew. Um, when you walked in, some of you may have asked yourself, why do we have splatter paint on the altar? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, some of you asked that. <laughs> well, I want to share with you how it was created because it's so cool. A few weeks ago, the youth made this piece of artwork as part of their youth group lesson. Their youth group leader, Ashley Dixon, gently broke open the top of each egg, poured out the yolk and the whole egg, dried out the egg and then filled it with paint. Now know that no eggs were wasted. I heard the Dixons ate breakfast burritos the entire week, so don't worry, we don't waste food. <laughs> but this is what happened. After the youth had their scripture lesson, Ashley took them to a place that we, they laid a, this big piece of paper and with lots of tarps on the ground and told them to throw an egg and each time they do, do it as something they need to let go of. Something that was hardening their hearts and not allowing God in. They let go of things like fake friends and jealousy. Ashley wrote me this and I thought it was beautiful. She said, with each paint-filled egg thrown, they were throwing out the negativity and opening their hearts to God. I just love this. And I thought, we have to have this up on the altar for Easter. Eggs filled with paint are transformed into this beautiful artwork. Eggs filled with paint are transformed into a powerful lesson. Today, our Easter celebration is all about the transformation that happened so many years ago, that death was defeated. And that's what gives us a huge reason to celebrate. Now, another part of a celebration is good conversation. We all know at parties that you want someone that's a good conversationalist. <laughs> and most of the time, you know who they are. <laughs> and then you know the ones that aren't so good and you kind of try to not be with them all night, right? <laughs> Now, as I'm just being honest, what, well, you know, if I'm not honest, then I shouldn't be a pastor, okay? Now, as part of our Easter celebration, I want us to look at a really interesting part of a conversation that happens that we see recorded in the Gospel of Luke. Now, know that the empty tomb is recorded in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell us about the empty tomb. But each gospel tells us different details and different things. Now, I want you to think about this in this idea that if four of us told a story of something we saw, we would all pull out different details to share depending on our audience. So if my dad, my sister, my husband and I all shared a story with you of the exact same thing we saw, we would all share different details. And that's what happens in the Gospels. And so today we're going to look at the Gospel of Luke and the details that Luke gives us. Now in the Gospel of Luke, the women arrive at the tomb. They're going with spices because they know, or at least they thought they knew, that Jesus was in the tomb. And they were so distraught that Jesus did not have a proper burial, that they were coming with spices and oils to anoint his body for appropriate burial. 
But when they got there, like Dylan so wonderfully said, the stone was rolled away. And scripture just tells us that these women walk in, which I think they are so brave, right? (laughs) They walk in and Luke tells us that they see two men standing in dazzling white clothes. And then the most interesting conversation happens. I want us to look at what what the men said. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the son of man must be handed over to the sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Look at that question the messengers ask. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Let that question soak into your mind for a second. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Now, I read a lot getting ready for this morning so I could give you all a good sermon. And one of the things, again, I'm just being honest. (laughs) I read a really great article and I want to share with you what it said about this question. Why do you look for the living among the dead? One scholar said this, we are guilty of such a fruitless, excuse me, we are guilty of such a fruitless choice, surge. We too want to tend to the corpse of long dead ideas and ideals. We cling to the former visions of our church and ourselves as if they might come back to life as long as we hold on to them. We grasp our loved ones too tightly, refusing to allow them to change, to become bigger or smarter or stronger. We choose to stay in what we know in our hearts to be dead because it's safe. The words of this messenger are a challenge to stop hanging on to the dead and move in to new life. They are a reminder that the Holy One dwells where new life burst forth. This Easter conversation is one of challenge, reminding us to stop hanging on to what is dead and to move on to new life. Oh my goodness, do we need this lesson. I would say that most of us have a friend that we hang out with and when we're done hanging out with them, we are more tired and more drained than when we started. Does anyone have a friend like that? Don't raise your hand, they might be next to you. (laughs) But we know at the end that we know that this relationship is dead, but we keep looking for a healthy, loving relationship in something that we know is dead. Why do we spend hours on mindless activities and then wonder why we don't feel full of life? Why do we spend so much time on mind-numbing activities like TVs and movies and searching the internet when Jesus taught us where we can find life? Jesus says where we find life is loving your neighbors and being in community. We find life when we are serving and being in community. But we often try to find life in things that are completely dead. Why are we holding a grudge and then surprised that our life doesn't seem happy or full? Why do we cling on to the dead end of grudges when Christ taught us that we are to love and forgive? Why do we look for things that are life-giving among the dead? There are things that we know are dead in this world. Alcohol, drugs, gossip, porn. These things are never gonna bring us life, but why do we keep looking to them to find life? Why do we keep dreaming of things how they used to be when we know that they can never be that way again? 
In this Easter conversation, it is one of challenge to stop hanging on to what we know is dead and to move on to life. So that's the challenge for us. What are the things that we know are dead and will not bring us life? Is it a habit? Is it a job? Is it a relationship? Is it a grudge? The gospel of Luke reminds us to stop looking for life in things that are dead. Now, I don't want to just challenge you and leave you feeling depressed. (laughs) I also want to give you a pat on the back. Because I think that you all came to find life here. Even those of you that were forced to come, you still, it's okay, you can laugh. (laughs) All of you, I think no matter how you got here, are coming to find life and hope. And I am so glad that you are here at this church this morning and that you are not looking to the Easter Bunny to give you meaning. (laughs) Now, I know that sounds absurd, right? That we would look to the Easter Bunny for meaning, but the society, really, when you look at it, really claims that that's what Easter's about. The Easter Bunny, eggs, and candy, which are not bad, (laughs) but are not the reason for Easter. Today, we celebrate that Christ the Lord is risen. We came looking for life and hope. And we are so in desperate need of Jesus and the life he brings. Because if we're honest, I think we look at the world, we watch the news, and we think the world is wacko right now. (laughs) And this morning, like the women, we are coming to hear a message that is different than society. Life seems crazy, and then we receive a message like those women that Jesus Christ is risen. And that transforms everything. It reminds us that love is possible, hope is possible. Forgiveness is possible. We are reminded at this Easter celebration that Jesus can never be confined to the traditional or the safe or the predictable. Here's the thing. Those women that first Easter morning were going to do the best thing they knew to do. They came with such honest and pure intent. They they came to bury Jesus properly. But what they found was a huge challenge, but also the greatest news ever. And so that's with us this morning. We're met with a challenge. Maybe we wanted our Easter to be traditional and safe and predictable. Maybe we didn't want to see splatter paint on the altar. Maybe we didn't want to hear a challenge before we went home and ate our ham. But here's the truth. Just like that first Easter morning, we're met with a challenge in the gospel. And we're asked that same question, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Like the women, we're faced with a challenge, but we are faced with the greatest news of all time. The women in our text, they were in such a need of resurrection. They were heartbroken, broken. They were confused and their spirits were in complete turmoil. They were still rocking and reeling from the events that took place just a few days earlier. And I would say that most of us find us in that position sometimes, that we just feel heartbroken, that we feel confused, or that our spirit is in just complete turmoil. 
Or maybe we find ourselves just in a place rocking from what we did not think life would throw at us. The women are reminded that knowing that Jesus Christ is risen is better than we expect. It is the best news possible. Not that 2,000 years ago Jesus Christ was risen, that, but that Jesus Christ is risen today and always. We're reminded to stop looking for life in the things that we know are dead, but looking to the things that we know will bring life. Being in a faith community, praying, reading scripture, serving, loving, forgiving, those are the things that will bring life. Friends, let us be so powerfully reminded this Easter morning that no matter how bleak and dark our life may get, Jesus has the final say that Christ the Lord is risen. And that is something to truly celebrate. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you please pray with me? God, as we celebrate the empty tomb, we rejoice that death does not have the final victory, but rather that life love, and goodness prevails. Lord, break open our lives so that we may receive all the love, forgiveness, and freedom that you so freely give. May we allow your resurrection to make a real difference in how we live. May we forever Live in hope of all that is yet to be. Amen. We now come where we give of our tithes and our offerings, not because we have to, not because we're gilded into, but out of this great gratitude to God, we give so that here at this church and throughout the world, we can say today and always, that Jesus Christ is risen. So I invite the ushers forward to collect this morning.